G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be flying the F3H2 Demon. This is a plane that recently got a little bit of love in the form of some new missiles. No, we're not talking about better IR missiles, no AIM-9Es, no AIM-9Gs, still the old AIM-9Bs, but of course we have ourselves a little upgrade in the form of semi-active radar homing missiles. The AIM-7Cs have come to the Demon, and it's kind of cool. It is kind of cool, but for, before we get into this, I would just like to give a quick shout out to Air Models, who is the channel partner. These guys are fantastic. They produce some pretty high quality, or at least they retail some pretty high quality diecast models. I've got a couple myself. I really like them, and if you guys are in the market for that type of stuff, head on down to the link in the description below. So, of course, the F3H Demon gets itself some AIM 7s. This is a bit of an interesting change. I didn't think that they would do this at battle rating 9.7. So planes as low as battle rating 8.7 being things like, I used to say MiG-15 BIS, but this thing doesn't really come across them anymore. It does come across MiG-17s, and it does come across things like the, uh, the Venom, if you're, you know, daring enough to play something that is 8.7, but still worse than the, the MiG-15 BIS. And... Probably worse than the A5 Sabre. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But the Demon does come with this little bit of an extra perk. And of course, this now puts it at a rightful 9.7 instead of a kind of contentious 9.7. Before, I kind of wondered why they put it from 9.3 to 9.7. And whilst it was a very good plane, the 9.3 battle rating suited it a little bit better. And of course, now that it's up, it is up at 9.7, it kind of fits it a little bit better with those AIM 7s. It fits in that sort of transitional area between the subsonics and the supersonics, that being a sort of, I, I think it's about a Mark 1 type jet. Uh, it, it is a little bit fast, but it's not super fast. It's kind of about similar speeds to a G91YS or a little bit faster, maybe like between the YS and the F100. This plane is, however, very, very decent. And at this battle rating, you are facing enemies that you can dogfight quite well. It's not too bad. Of course, you don't really want to be dogfighting with the added weight of missiles, and so you might want to be getting rid of these missiles nice and early in the game by climbing up to high altitude and picking off enemies at said altitude. So, what am I doing here? I'm basically looking for enemies using my ACM mode, and uh, it's not really working until 4 kilometers, despite the thing saying 9, and uh, aim 7 on the way, way too ambitious, and instead I'm just going to go guns, but no dice on the guns either. So, are we going to be nice and frugal, or... Are we going to go spending those missiles? Now, I've taken two of the uh, AIM-7s and two of the AIM-9Bs because I think that I might need the AIM-9Bs for some close-in combat, but I might also need the AIM-7s for some high-altitude all-aspect combat. The AIM-7Cs have an overload of, I think it's 12 or 15 Gs, one of them, and uh, it's they're okay. They're, they're okay, but it's the radar that really makes the missile. If you can't get a solid lock and you can't maintain a solid lock, then there's no point keeping the lock. But guns don't need a lock at all, and so you can just shoot them wherever you want and they'll go in a straight line. And that's exactly what's happened here. Nice little kill on the MiG-17. I'm going to send myself an AIM-7 for this AV-8, but unfortunately it is a little bit too late. But like I said, guns never argue. Guns never lose lock, and of course, it just requires you to point the nose in a good direction, and I'm pointing my nose in the direction of this PFM. You might be wondering why I'm out turning him, and that's exactly what I was thinking, but if you think about it a little bit carefully, the F3H dumps its speed very easily, and has big fat juicy wings. So, it doesn't surprise me at all that this plane has a fair amount of, uh, I guess, lift. I guess you can call it a light wing loading compared to the PFM, but uh, I don't know, I don't think so. I, I think that the PFM just sort of loses energy and can't really keep up in a turn fight. Just because it's a little bit heavy and it's got a delta wing and also bleeds at speed. So, that might be a better explanation towards the reasoning, but for those of you that actually know what you're talking about in terms of you know, aeronautics and all that, let me know in the comments below. Now, in this case here, I have myself a Shen Yang, but I have plenty of enemies or plenty of allies around me and no enemies around me, so it's going to be a lot easier to get myself some kills. Now, I thought I had an AIM-7 here, so I go for a quick little head-on 
as uh, a last minute sort of compensation but unfortunately no dice on that one and uh, we've got ourselves a Yak-38 coming in. Now the Yak-38s are going to be your biggest bane here because if they catch you off guard then they have an R60 straight for you and whilst the Demon is very good in that situation where you have a lot of speed it can roll out of the way you uh, don't really stand much of a chance after that second or third roll or if you're caught in at low speed. Now thankfully for me I have plenty of speed to speak of and look at the pull on this plane. It has some great pull and I think that's due to the wing slats just giving it that little bit of extra edge on uh, turning but of course you sacrifice a lot of speed in those turns because you just do not have that ability to maintain speed in such a tight turn without of course the engine acceleration so you're going to be watching your turns you don't want to be making too many of those aggressive turns because otherwise you're going to end up in a bad situation and that is not good for your health so not good for your health is an AIM-9B but unfortunately the AIM-9B does not connect and uh, basically going to be spending the next like couple minutes trying to chase down this F-104. You have to be mindful in the demon of the fuel load that you take. Now personally I like to take uh, I think it's about 20 minutes of fuel and I think 20 minutes of fuel is about ideal for this level of uh, jets where you have uh, not a particularly thirsty afterburner but your afterburner is still going to consume way too much for you to take min fuel and it's going to consume a lot that uh, to, to the point where you're going to need to take more than nine minutes and even if you're flying a non afterburning jet I do recommend that you take more than nine minutes of fuel I think 15 minutes would be ideal uh, so about 15 minutes of flight time whatever gets you closest to that is going to be your best bet so um, F-104A here is in a little bit of a pickle have a look at how slow he is and then have a look at the AIM-9B sending it down all the way and uh, is it going to connect? Unfortunately, so unlucky McDucky for my AIM-9B. Maybe if it was an AIM-9G, it would have been done a little bit better. But uh, if you gave this thing 9Gs, you'd probably have to throw it at 10 -0. This thing is surprisingly competitive and is a lot of fun in the right hands and, of course, in the right situations. I spent a, a good part of a day gathering footage for this plane, and honestly, it is decent fun, provided that you don't get up here too much. But when you do get up here, you still have the chance to actually leave a fair mark on your enemies. Uh, I think this match is close to a full up tier. Um, it's at 10.3 at the very least because we have an F5. Unless, of course, that is a Shen Yang F5. I don't think it is, though. But uh, we'll see as he gets in nice and close. I'm going to look to lock up this F100, trying to use the ACM mode again. But I don't really think it's going all that well just because of that... Uh, it, it, it seems to lock in at four kilometers. I think it's lying. I think it's it's not nine kilometers that it uh, is going to lock in at. I think it's going to pick up that four kilometer range. Uh, it might be a bug. It might just be a feature. Let me know in the comment section below which one it is. For those of you that I don't know, not not served on the demon because you'd probably be in a geriatric ward at this point. But um, for those of you that uh, know a little bit about it do let me know in the comment section now hunter fga9 oh no no to that uh last minute head on please and another last minute head on from the phantom i shouldn't be taking these at all but we're gonna have a little bit of fun here with this phantom because once he's turned i can basically cut in on the inside now the demon was in from what i can gather the precursor to the phantom it was kind of like a a little bit of a pre-model or like a not a prototype but i guess the generation before so have a look at this dogfight here i'm gonna get you to pay close attention to what this mirage is doing he's turning and he is burning a lot of speed but i've gone into the vertical now you might expect the mirage to be a bit better turning aircraft than this thing but at the lower speeds it's actually the demon that pulls through you'll never believe why well not really it's pretty pretty straightforward so that uh, F4C that I met earlier can have an AIM-9B and that's going to connect and of course the fire is going to kill the Mirage but the Mirage is a plane that is not a turn fighter it is not a plane that turns well it just cuts into turns well it has that high AOA which you'd get from a Delta Wing fighter but it doesn't have good abilities to rate fight one plane that does have good ability to rate fight is the F5C because its acceleration is not particularly amazing but it's sort of lightweightness it's very very 
light and it's very very maneuverable but it's continually maneuverable because it has enough acceleration to keep it in the air but it also has that ability to cut into turns so it's kind of a 50 50. things like the mig 21 are also good at uh sort of that aoa fighting and uh, they're good at not rate fighting as such as in a horizontal fight but when you start to energy fight going to the vertical that is when a plane like the mig 21 bis really shines but in terms of the f3 demon you have sort of in the middle you just kind of sit in the middle and it's one of those planes that you just do a little bit of everything in but you've got to be careful you can't kill your speed too much you can't run away and expect to outrun everyone there are going to be situations where you struggle and where you're not the best and you just have to try and use your little bit of advantages so what would these advantages be of course the wing slats are a good start this plane turns quite well it's not particularly fast and it dumps a lot of speed so what you can do is you can make a couple of aggressive turns at the start of your fight to force an overshoot or to try and get your opponent to maybe overshoot in one way or another and that is probably where you're going to find your greatest success in the demon it's a pretty good plane and being sort of american with those 20 mils very very good indeed and of course you have those aim sevens but i haven't really shown you the aim sevens doing anything of any value but this is the match that is kind of going to change that the uh, f2 decides he wants a last minute head on and of course it's not going to be happening i'm going to go into a vertical and energy trap the f2 if i can but uh, otherwise i'm going to be looking to dive back onto him there's an f11 on my team but the f11 up heading in front of me is going to be my target of interest here i'm going to try and hold a lock and see if i can get myself an aim 7c kill it looks like the lock's holding i'm not really sure why but the missile tracks beautifully in this case i I don't know what's happening. It's almost like a certified pulse Doppler moment, but this radar is definitely not a pulse Doppler radar. I guess it could just be in the range where the ra radar missile can... I've, I've heard that it can sort of home into your opponent's radar or your opponent's radar signature. I, I'm not really sure about that. I don't really know. But again, let me know in the comments section. I would love to learn something new. Now, with that kill out of the way, we're going to be having a look at helping some teammates here. This MiG-21 looks fairly preoccupied with the J-32, and a J-32 is actually going to struggle quite a lot against things like the MiG-21, just because the MiG-21 has that ability to cut into its opponents. Now, the MiG-21 unfortunately does not die to the missile, but we have plenty of guns. It seems to be a running theme on this plane that your guns are going to be your primary target, your primary mechanism that you kill people with, because it's just not feasible to get missile kills every single time. The missiles are not reliable enough, they're not strong enough, and you know what, for 9.7, it's not too bad, and I'm willing to take that any damn day of the week. So, SU-7 gets himself a nice AIM-9B, but that I don't think is going to go anywhere, and the AV-8 is going to look very juicy on the gun side of things. Unfortunately, I can't quite lead the shots, and just as he rolls over, I don't have the ability to get the kill. A missile is uh, the answer for that one instead. So, we've got ourselves left the SU-7B, and I wanted to just show you this clip. So, this is the kind of contrast that you're looking at with the AIM-7. It is a uh, pretty insane missile sometimes, and it's also a pretty dud missile other times. So, have a look at this shot. I'm expecting to kind of remain tracking with this thing, but uh, unfortunately, it... Uh, yeah, you've got to be really careful with these missiles. They're not very user-friendly, if you will, and the situations that you've got to be using them in are very, very selective. They're kind of like AIM-9Bs, but like radar as well. So it's it's a little bit of knowledge, and it's a little bit of patience. And um, as you can see in a second, a little bit of patience would have gone a long way. This uh, SU-7 has decided that going into the vertical is a great idea. Obviously it is not, but it is a better idea than it was about 20 seconds ago when I had an AIM-7C. I could have had this kill. Uh, the AIM-7 only has a 1km range where it's not manoeuvring, and if I can lead the missile properly at 1.13, he basically doesn't stand a chance. But where you don't have missiles, you have guns. And at 1.13 I managed to strike a 20mm and that's basically going to be the end of it for him. 
I'm starting to run low on ammo, but it's going to the point where I am going to get myself a kill. Have a look at the distance I'm closing in on this SU-7 in the vertical, and of course, because he's the only one left, I'm happy to just full commit to a vertical. It's just the way things are. You know, when you're one-on-one, -on -one or when you have no threat of being shot from behind, or being climbed after, then you can do the climbing. You can do all the dumb maneuvers you want, because you don't have anyone behind you. And that's one of the key things that even I make mistakes with Air RB. You don't always look around. Your situational awareness isn't always key. But like I said, in a situation like this where the enemy is literally the last one on the team, you can do whatever the hell you want in most cases and get away with it. But uh, have a look at this SU-7. There's nothing he can do and it's basically game over. The F-3H is one of those planes where you just can kind of do a little bit of whatever. And that's what I like about it. It's not foolproof, it's not idiot-proof, it's definitely not invincible, and it is certainly not a one-size-fits-all. This plane does have some very little caveats, and of course, if you do things like lose all your speed, get dogpiled, you're not going to have a good time. But if you position yourself in a way that allows you to take advantage of enemies that are maybe not paying attention, or that positions you in a way that you can collect an enemy that is at altitude, then that is a surefire way to get that dub. So, we're in a match here that is, again, a bit of a uh, sort of mix between up tier and down tier. We're looking at some AV-8s, F-11s, F-5s, and of course the uh, lovely little T2 there who is very, very slow. You don't want to be slow in jets, and that's basically why. Everyone can close the distance so rapidly at jets that you just can't afford to stay slow. For this plane, I wouldn't drop below 500 or 600, This, un unless, of course, you're in a really tight heavy dog fight so you just got to play your cards right you got to play a little bit safe and have a look at that energy that i just blew whilst going over it's a lot of energy to blow on a single turn so like i said this thing does not hold energy in a turn but it holds a little bit more energy than a uh, than a mig 21 buccaneer however is going to be supposedly a very easy target but remember the chad buccaneer has flares and uh with flares, you get no kill. F5C, however, doesn't have anything to protect himself against my stupid aim. So, unfortunately for him, he lives through that escapade. I'm going to roll over and try and get myself onto the uh, Buccaneer again, or alternatively, go and figure out another solution here. This F5 is kind of looking juicy, and the Buccaneer is also looking fairly juicy. So, who am I going to pick? It's obviously going to be the target that is the high priority and is closest to me so f5c once he's slow once he's lost all his speed is pretty much a done deal you're not really going to get away with the f5c if you're just going to be a slow poke all the time and that's kind of what the f5c lacks a little bit i am going to make a video on that very very soon but i thought i might have a show with the f3h just to uh kind of show off its new capabilities and of course highlight the old ones because this plane is a little bit forgotten a lot of people don't really play this plane and it is pretty damn good if i do say so myself so moving on we have a harrier staring at us from five and a half kilometers and i'm going to send an aim 7c because i am in an upwards attitude towards him and of course that aim 7 is absolutely going to not hit so oh dear it is a very very temperamental missile so you have to really give it some some love and some patience but i'll tell you what i don't have love and patience so i'm just going to go for a head on with the gr1 i don't want to present any other attitudes to him because i will get s rammed if he hasn't already spent them and i can't guarantee that so i have to commit to this turn fight but of course the harrier is a bus and i have 20 mils and so buses do not live beyond those 20 mils this f104s has also decided to join the fray from about one point something kilometer spotting i don't know why he spotted at one point something kilometers, but I tell you what, he's going to fly in front of my guns, and so I am going to use them. Off they go, and I don't know. That was that was kind of weird. I maybe he just wanted to die by me. Who knows? But I'll take it. Either way, it would be wonderful. So we have two Harriers here, and one of these Harriers is looking at my friendly F100 here. The other one is following me, so uh, not good situation. But the other Harrier that is in front is not really paying attention. He's a little bit slow, and the AIM-7 connects beautifully. So if you're going to be using AIM-7s, use them on slow targets. That's going to be your best bet. Slow targets, high altitude. However, 
You don't want to be using it on uh, things that might be able to dodge them. Harrier is not one of them, of course, and things that have RWR are going to find it very easy to dodge these things, especially considering that your radar isn't as potent and the AIM-7 doesn't quite have the range. But um, if you ever get in a stuck situation like that where someone is like avoiding these missiles, it's probably just better to stay conservative and not waste them. Speaking of waste, I've just wasted a nice little AIM-9B on the Harrier, and uh, the F-100 polishes them off quite nicely. Have a look at the team list though. I am one of the last members on my team. There's the F-100, there's that F-4C that just passed behind me, and myself. It's going to be a little bit of a slog trying to bring this game back, and it's not going to be fun at all. The Lightning looks like he might be interested in me, but decides it is best to go, and so I decide to head back to base. So after a little bit, it looks like one of the Buccaneers have been, or uh, well, the Buccaneer has been sort of carrying the game a little bit in terms of uh, ground ground units, ground units. We're looking pretty bad on tickets, and so I might need to make a move. But I'm kind of just focused on getting some air kills, and this Hunter looks like he's focused on getting some bombing bases. And uh, Lightning F6 comes out of nowhere, a bit of an RKO out of nowhere, except no RKO. And of course, Lightning is going to look for a little bit of a turn fight. This is a bit of a mistake by the Lightning. Uh, it is definitely not a plane that you want to be dogfighting with. Even against something that is a little bit boaty like this, you can't really afford to. And so. 9B sending his way. Are we going to make the connection? No, not quite, because the Lightning still has a fair bit of acceleration, and that is enough to accelerate it out of the path of my missiles. And now I've got no missiles because I wasted them all on the Buccaneer and the Hunter because monkey, basically. The 9Cs are those temperamental missiles that I talked about earlier, and you can't really just go and spam them like you would like 9Js or 7Es or something like that. Now, at this point, I thought I was actually facing a Hunter F6, and so I thought I was fucked until about this point where I realized it's a Lightning F6, and then I rubbed my hands together, turned my afterburner off in order to try and sit behind him, but of course, when you go into the vertical, make sure that you gain a little bit more acceleration. Have a look at that turning, and that's partially due to bleeding speed, but holy shit, have a look at that turning, a bit of spray and prey, and the Lightning is dead. My god. Is that not some crazy performance on this plane? So you have slightly temperamental missiles, you have slightly temperamental 9Bs and radar, but um, unfortunately ground units prevail and, 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 and I lose, man. Very, very sad day, but you know what? It's a good way to show off the capabilities of this plane and that's all that matters to me. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I, let me know what you think about the Demon. Let me know what you think about the M7s. Take care. And I'll catch you next time.